In this video, we will be creating SEO-friendly URLs in Ruby on Rails. So normally when we create a Rails application, by default, it uses the ID of each entry in the database. So in this case, if we check in the URL in the address bar, it uses the ID of two for this post. And what we want to do here is actually use a format that includes a more readable name, which is presented in the address bar. So this is good for SEO or for search engine optimization, and it helps your website rank better in Google. To do this, we'll be using the friendly ID gem. But what it does is just simply takes the, the entry that you're saving to the database and uses a title or a name to store a human friendly string as part of the URL. So this makes it easier for our site to get indexed in Google, and it will help us rank better. So this gem has been around for a long time, as you can see, some of these commits that were made to it were seven years ago or more, but there are a lot of contributors on this gem, and it's been a gem that I use quite frequently for handling this scenario. So let's look at setting this up in our application. So the first thing we need to do then is to add the gem into our gem file. So we'll copy this gem friendly ID and the version number, and we'll open up the gem file, and we will paste this into the bottom. And now if we go to our terminal, we can run bundle install to install this gem. And once that's completed, we will return to the documentation. And the next thing we need to do here is to create a migration. And we can just copy the slug unique. So this has to be added to our table in our database. So we'll be adding this to our posts table. So let's create our migration now in the terminal. add slug to posts. Once we run this, it will create a new migration file. So let's open this up. And we can see here that we have got a new column called slug. And it's also adding an index for us. So this unique constraint on our posts table will ensure that we do not have duplicates in our database table. So now we need to run the Rails generate friendly ID command. So this will create a migration file for us, but it will also create a configuration file for the friendly ID gem. So first let's look at the migration that's been created. So this will create a new table called friendly ID slugs. So now let's look at the configuration file that has been created. So probably one of the most important things to note in here is the reserved words. So this is an array of words that we can't use as the name of the blog post entry. In this case, we don't want people to be using these words because they are reserved and we need them for our application to run correctly. So you can add additional words in here if required. So you can see we've got like users, admin, login, logout. So it's very important that these reserved words don't get used as a title for a blog as it will automatically create the URL for that and will conflict with some of the routes that we need in our application. So any important routes we need to protect, we should put them in that reserved words array. And other than that, there are just some basic settings in here that you can explore. But out of the box, this works perfectly as it is. So now let's run the Rails DB migrate command to make these changes to our database. So now we have the new table added. And after this, we are pretty much ready to go. We just need to copy this code into our model. So we'll copy these two lines. So that includes the friendly ID gem. And then we are telling the gem which field of our table we are using to base the URL on. So in this case, it's the name in this example. So let's paste this into our model. So we have the friendly ID and the column name.
So looking at the documentation again, we need to include the friendly reference into the find method when we are selecting the data from the database. So in this case, it's using user.find, but we're changing it to user.friendly.find. So this is telling Rails that we are going to use the slug column in order to load that data from the table. So by default, it would be using the ID column. So let's go back to the browser and reload. And we are not seeing this working because we need to restart the Rails server. So after you make any big changes like this, we should always restart the Rails server. Let's try this once more. And now it's working. But you'll notice here that if we go into an existing post, it still has the ID. And the reason for this is that we haven't saved this post again since. So in order for it to figure out what the URL is, it needs to be saved first. So we don't have to change anything. We just have to come back and hit the update button. And we also have another thing we forgot to change here. In this case, we do not have the column name of name. We've actually used the word title as a column name. So you can see that at the bottom in the parameters here, we have the title parameter and the value attached to it. So let's go back to our model and we will change the name that we are checking for. So let's change this name to title. Let's reload once again. We'll resubmit the form and you'll see now that it is working. So we've got the correct URL being saved this time. So you'll notice that it matches the title, it just uses the hyphens in between the words. We'll do the same with this one. We'll modify this and save it again. And it's automatically created the proper title now. If you want to update multiple posts or perhaps just you have a lot of posts on your application, you can actually do this uh, updating of the posts via the command line. So we can run Rails console. Within the console, when we can just automatically update all of the posts. So this will create the URL for us. Now in our case, we've only got a couple of examples, so we don't need to do that. But in a working application or a production application, you'd probably want to do it via the Rails console. So let's test this out by creating a new post and see what happens. So previously, it would just create an ID at the top, but this time it should create the proper URL for us. And you can see that we have that created now. So what happens if you want to change the URL? So normally, we don't want to change the URL of a post after it's created. And the reason for that is that we may have backlinks that point to that page. And you don't want to be in a situation where Google is linking to your website, but the page no longer exists because it has been renamed. But there are cases and when you may want to be able to change this. And as long as you know what you're doing, it can be done quite easily in Rails. So in this case, we can add an additional field. So we would add a field here that lets us change the slug. So I'm just going to show you an example. If I save this now, it doesn't change the URL for us. So in order to make that work, we'd have to add an additional field into the form that allows us to make that change. So let's do that now just really quickly. So let's open up the views folder. And under posts, we will edit the form.html.erb. So let's we'll copy this existing field. and We'll change this to slug. So we'll do the same for the label. And we'll also need to modify the controller. So we'll open the posts controller. And at the very bottom, we will add the additional slug into the whitelisted fields. So now once we edit this value and we hit Save, you will see that the URL is actually changed now. So it is updated based on what we have input. So this is a way you can get around that problem of modifying the URL, but you do need to keep in mind that you may need to set up some redirects in the back end to make it a better experience for the user. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful and you can use it in your own applications. And if you did find it helpful, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for new content. 
and I will see you all in the next video.